Make it special, make it Maloney. This segment of the Port Jeff Pulse is sponsored by Houndstown in Port Jefferson, home to the happiest dogs on earth. What a lively, lively day we have here at Danfords. We have, we have men putting in cables, helicopters coming in, dropping supplies. It's incredible. It is. And we still make the show happen. The show must go on. It must, always. Good morning, guys. Good Danfords morning, is on Hi, the honey. pulse Hi, of the Karen. summer. Hi. Oh, the pulse. The Port, pulse of the, the summer. Jeff pulse. Danfords you notice how long I'm holding pulse. your hand? I know. It's very nice. It's warm, right? <laughs> it is warm. You feel welcome? Do you want me to hold your Because hand? you have it up to 80 in here. So if anybody sees any you know, little driplets <sighs> on my face. I'm sweating. It's because Kevin has it at 80 <laughs> degrees in our... <laughs> In our little we're, area. We're doing a <laughs> detox today. <laughs> so, unbeknownst to me, yep. it's The hotter. air conditioning system is off because yeah. I like it quiet. I only right. want to well, hear your you beautiful wisdom. Right. That's right. the whole idea. Because it's noisy with the right. headphones. All right. All right. So, we're here in the Brookhaven room. I did a little live thing. I mentioned you. Oh, I nice. said, hey, Lisa's going to be on with the Real Estate Spotlight. Thank you. And here you are with your umpteenth one. And yeah. what subject are we talking about today? Do you think people are getting tired yeah. of hearing me? No. no what? Right? Okay. No. Keep it live. All right. No. Keep it going. Uh, today I thought we'd just talk a little bit about why have a home inspection. I think a few episodes ago I just mentioned really quickly that a seller might want to have like a pre-inspection mm-hmm. before they put their house on the market. But this this is why as a home buyer you have an inspection. Normally it happens within three to four days after an accepted offer. Negotiations, negotiations are done. There's an accepted offer. You book the engineer. Um, it's very, very important because a lot of people think they've found their dream house, but you can't always judge a book by its cover. And this goes for houses that are new construction even as well. I mean, because sometimes I, I just, uh, I'm in contract on a what's called a flip. It's, the house looks amazing when you get inside, but then the in- engineer found um, that carpets were put over wall of subflooring that had been rotted because of leaks in the house oh. before it had been flipped. Lots of things like that. So that's not the, good. The 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 reason you do it is for the buyer to to know the condition, the overall condition. And to be honest, it's it's compared to finding major defects when you move in, it's it's the least expensive way to go about it. It usually is about five hundred dollars to five fifty. Nope. <coughs> I recommend uh, I have somebody on my team, uh, John from New Home Inspections. He's he's my go-to guy. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of my buyers, um, and and it, he is not working for me. And I make that very clear when I recommend him. Mm-hmm. You know, he, they work solely for the buyer. The buyer pays for the inspection. That inspection is owned by the buyer, and it cannot be transferred. Okay. For instance, unless the buyer decides to sell it. So, say if deal falls through. Um, you've already had an inspection on the house. The only way for that inspection to be passed on is for somebody new to purchase it from the buyer, uh, from the other buyer. And sometimes they will sell it because, you know, they're losing. Maybe they'll get back half the money. Um, sure. But is it? It really is. You're really just looking for to find out the condition of the house. And, and can, can I tell you I have a real-time story about this? Sure, yeah. And I have a bunch, so in, go ahead. In, yeah. in upstate New York, um, I, I, I used to own a bunch of um, uh, student housing. And then I went outside my comfort zone, and I got emotional about a home. This is a true story. And you can't always get emotional about real estate. And I got very emotional about this home on a hill. I had to have this home on a hill. Oh. And was this it, up near college? Yeah, this was in. Uh, this is outside of Oneonta. Okay. Right, that's where you had all your your. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. So I and and I was just normally just renting to college students, and then I got like I said, emotion. I wanted to own a home on the hill and rent it, or maybe live there. The point of the matter is that there was a river running through, through the basement <laughs> of the home, a little river, oh my goodness. which I didn't see because I didn't use a home inspector back then. I just said, oh, oh I love this home. Let's do, people, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, it was, yeah. a, it was a creek. I mean, it was literally running off the hill through the basement. And I remember... So you never did an inspection and you purchased the house. That's correct. Yeah, and the seller was like, that's yeah, correct. baby. You know why? Right, and they don't have to disclose. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when things are moving and things were moving pretty quickly back then, you just, you know, just go on your own, you know, intuition and whatnot. Well, 
that was the lesson I learned. I had a hard time selling that home after that. Yeah, because anybody else came in and did a home inspection. Right, right. that's the truth. So, you know, they're looking at um, every feature, wiring, plumbing, roofing, insulation. Rivers. Um, structural. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a horror story. I had a, purchase, a buyer a few years ago that was looking in um, Bayville, incorporated, you know, down on the water. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit after Sandy. The We got all the way to the inspection, and luckily the inspector who is from the same company that I recommend all the time opened up like a in the basement there was just like like it looked like a false wall and they found like thirty thousand dollars of structural damage that was not disclosed to us because the seller would not oh, let the agent disclose it and goodness. we of course walked away from the deal but wow. and I had asked is there sandy damage no 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 mm. you know and so there's things that you know they're not meant to scare the buyer mm -hmm. They're really meant to be like a honey-do list. And I always tell my buyers, we don't think this is going to be a new negotiating tool. You don't really want it to be that. However, it does turn to that sometimes. Yeah, if it's major. Sometimes sure. you'll get a credit. Right. Um, you know, inspectors find unabandoned oil tanks, for instance, underground, where the seller should really take care of, mm -hmm. you know, abandoning the tank. And sometimes either that'll be a credit or you'll 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 they'll remedy it. Most of the time, you want the seller to remedy it, so you don't have to worry about credit. It's put right into the contracts. If there's copper wiring that hasn't been pigtailed, um, you know, again, you're making a huge investment as yeah. a buyer, and you want to make sure. Even if there's a list of, you know, they'll tell you the roof is at this point in its age, the furnace is here, um, and again you know, leaks in, in plumbing that they find, mm -hmm. different things like that. And, and literally, you know, it could be a 35-page report with pictures mm -hmm. and usually get sent to the attorney for the buyer, myself as the buyer rep, and we go through it. And then we maybe pick up some things that maybe we'll ask right. them to remedy. The seller doesn't have to do anything. Uh, the same house that I just told you about, with it looks beautiful. It's a flip. There were definitely that the floor issue. There, the seller's taking care of. Also, when he went upstairs, because the house had been abandoned for so long, mm -hmm. all of the insulation had a smell to it. Obviously, some critters had gotten in. Oh. So, I mean, all of the insulation. So the seller actually ripped out the entire insulation and replaced it, which at his own, you know, which is something that, yeah, that's another thing that they really mm -hmm. should take care of. Usually mm -hmm. it's any major plumbing issue, any major electrical mm -hmm. issue. Other than that, I don't like to use, I don't like my, my buyers to think it's a negotiating tool to yeah. renegotiate the price because yeah. it's really not for that. It's really meant for you as the buyer to feel confident when you're purchasing the right. house. That, that you the know plan. everything, yeah. right, that you know yeah. what's going on. Yeah, and they also do um, a termite inspection, you know, cr you know, and that's something usually the seller will have to deal with. Uh, a lot of times they'll see, the, the inspector will see that there had been at some point some sort of contract because they'll see what was some sort of setup to get rid of the termites. And then nowadays they're even doing radon uh, detection, but that's not done okay. as much here. Yeah, um, right. Although I did have... Pennsylvania. Yeah, it, but interestingly enough, I had a, a professor that had come in um, at Stony Brook, bought a house locally from somebody we know very well. And he, he wanted to put a, a detector down into the basement and leave it there overnight, which, you know, when I spoke to um, his, my seller's attorney, who happened to be Margo, she said, that's really not done that much anymore. But they, you know, they did it. They so, did it, yeah. yeah. I mean, you want to make sure the house is at current standards and, you know, not move in a bull aesthetically, but move in that, right. you know, there's, safe. No, there's no leaks. Right. By the way, does safe. the law say if termites are found, they have to be fixed? Yeah. Um, Okay, good question. If it's the law, it's just a known given that the seller takes care of any kind of termite or... Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I've know. Never I don't had... know if that's a law. No. Okay. I don't know. And again, you know, it, it, they're just telling you things that, you know, it, 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 there is... I, I always tell my buyers, the seller doesn't have to do a thing except the termites. They don't have to do a thing. So, again, I just think it's important to let everybody know. And, and that's why it's important sometimes for a seller to do their own pre-sale inspection, especially if they nowadays, especially right now, because their sellers are wanting so much more for their houses. I, I have a new listing I'm going to be taking, mm -hmm. putting up next week in Port Jeff. They purchased the home from me. I was the buyer agent probably three years ago for four forty eight. We're gonna be listing it at five eighty nine. Again, one of those houses that it, they didn't do a lot of work to it. It's just that's what the price points are now. So the sellers want the top dollar for their house. Right. They need to make sure that 
some of these little things, you know, like GFI, you know, switches and mm -hmm. electrical is, is working in, in great condition so that they don't have any issue when, then, then when they get their accepted offer. Right, right. The seller does have to disclose what they know. That's the other thing. So, interestingly... What they know. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, if somebody died in the house, the seller has to disclose that. They don't... Really? They do. They really do. We... we um, if somebody has died in your house, you have to, you actually have to tell people. Um, but but other it, some things the seller doesn't have to say, um, it, it, as far as things that had gone on there. But if they know of a uh, a, a property issue, they do. Have yeah. to, why are you laughing? No, we're we're, we're, we're me, me, me and uh, Karen are going through. First of all, you know where we're going. We're saying, yeah. well, God, has anybody ever died in my house? That's the first. Thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was commonplace for people to die in the house back yeah. back yeah. when. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. it's not. Right. I don't know why we take right. the place. Why do we take place people other places yeah. to die? I don't get that. I don't know. I don't know. You know, like we, need to we should have babies at home and deaths at home from now on. I'm I know, but then it. what would happen to Pete Maloney? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, they could die. They could still be buried. They have to die at home. That's so we funny. need to talk to Pete Maloney about yeah. that. We, you we know, need to get it. It was back brought up now. because you know something like bad neighbors or things like that. You have to okay. disclose that. Okay. And that's you if know if you've buried no, your no, neighbor in the no. basement. Right. If, it's just okay. anything. That's, what, what I'm saying, oh. if so, if if the roof is structurally bad and you know it, you need to let people know that. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. If especially if you're asked, if, right. the, if the buyer's walking through, and he goes, "Oh, I see that leak there. Is that every, everything all right?" The seller can't go, "Yeah, that was ten years ago." When he knows it was last night. Right. Uh, they, <laughs> they signed. There's a, a credit that they will give because so they don't have to disclose. True. So I, I'm not. You know, that's why I did. A, I went to this house yesterday in Portland. The next Just, time you come on, I want you to bring a lawyer on. Okay. No, I'm serious. A real estate lawyer. Hmm. Do, Do we, we know, know one, one of those? One? Let me think. <laughs> Well, be, if it's after the election, maybe I can bring her in. Yeah. No, seriously, that's a whole yeah. thing that I think we yeah. want to cover, especially in New York. Yeah. You know? Because so, we're paranoid in New yeah, York. Yeah, anyway. I'm actually taking the licensing, the broker licensing now, so I'm learning a lot more. Um, it, you know, it's you do continuing ed. Okay. So normally you do 22 hours. So I said, you know what, if I'm going to do, you know, for the next, you know, I might as well do, do it, that. Do it's it. like a 45 yeah. hour. Good. And I'm just right. finishing. Good and there's you. a lot. I've learned a lot more about the legalities of some of the things. Yeah. Because it's a whole section on business law and yeah, things like I think. that. It's very interesting. Very you cool. Know, we Furthering have a lot your of, uh, knowledge. We have a lot of, we take on a lot of fiduciary responsibility and, and you have to be as honest as possible. And I try to do that, you know, yesterday. So some of the things about the leak that you bring up, though, is interesting because if you do go to a house and you're about to list it, if there are stains, sometimes they're they're from five years ago. There, there was a problem. That, then they replaced the roof, but they never fixed that little corner yeah. stain. Sure. So I do have them paint over sure, and just sure. make sure. But it, an inspector's going to see a roof immediately and know, especially roofs, furnace. They really look at the big ticket Foundation. items. Foundation. You know, those are the, the really big ticket items that they're looking for to make sure that you're not walking into your dream home that becomes right. your your money pit. Right. Your right. nightmare home. Your nightmare right. home. Your dream yeah. home right. becomes your nightmare home. Yeah. Right. Cool. What else do you want to talk about? So I have two listings I still want to talk about. Um, my two Port Jeff listings that uh, I, I feel are now – now I'm going to have three, and they're all going to be about – a hundred thousand apart, which is nice. So I, I still have twenty nine Laurel for four fifty four. We just lowered the price again, and I just think it's to me the best deal. It, the taxes again are six thousand dollars. Just oh my god, so man! I can't believe the taxes including are six thousand like sixty five hundred with Village. That is um, twenty nine Laurel Drive. Mm -hmm. Again, this brand new listing I put up about a week or so ago, sixteen Harbor Hills Drive. So this one is priced at six eighty nine. Gorgeous home, open floor plan. They've Clean. done an amazing. It is beautiful. I've been in there. Yeah, it's. it's they've gorgeous. done amazing. Oh, that's right. You, yeah. yeah. So that's right around the corner yeah, for me. Literally, what they've done to this house is incredible. House. They're staying in the village, but they want to do a yeah. little upgrade. And then I'm going to be listing one that's going to be right in between at five eighty nine. Uh, taking the listing next week. Five eighty nine. What? Five hundred eighty nine thousand. Five eighty nine thousand. Oh. And it's oh, but you in, can't say where it's located. Um, yet? it's up around uh, Edgewood and Hillcrest. It's, okay. Uh, I can tell you, it's going to be on Hillcrest. It's okay. a beautiful home, four bedrooms, three and a half bath, beautiful finished Hillcrest basement. Hillcrest is a great block. Uh, yeah, uh, beautiful pool. It's so I'll be listing Ooh. that. So I'm going to have one in five in all fours, the, the fives, and the six. Exactly. So okay. uh, just give me a call, and I can. Each. And Let me know when you find something in the threes. Yeah. <laughs> In the village. I had somebody come in the office the other day who said that to me. I said, that's, I think that's not happening for a that, while. That would be a house that's going to get condemned. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. I'll do a fixer-up. 
So uh, as this is probably aired, we would have had yep. our, and I, I need to say, probably would have had our opening for the Rock Chip Park, which is a th- couple of days away. We're so excited. We, we're actually a little nervous because we've had like 900 people put interested in going on Facebook. It's it's scary. I think, Kevin, you actually emailed me the other day and said, Lisa, did, what's going on? I said, we took it off because we, we, oh, we don't you did. Okay. too many people. Okay. We're getting calls every day where I was having dinner last night uh, in the village and somebody came over to me, oh, I can't wait for Thursday. I, I said, do you have children? No. I just can't wait to see it. So I'm thinking we're going to have a, a huge amount of people. Aww, that's so awesome. One of the proudest projects I've ever Aww. worked on in the village. I've been involved with a million it's, things. It's spectacular. It's one of, I, I really, it's spectacular. if you've gone there, it's there's, it's gorgeous, and yes. it's going to be amazing. And the tile wall is going to be going up, and the planks. We were there the other day walking through just where the plaques are going to be. You know, people like Stony Brook Hospital supported the uh, this rock wall, so there will have a plaque. So if you look at some of the the equipment, not the big equipment, but there's you'll see you know, little plaques of who donated mm-hmm. to the park. And then we okay. have a donor wall with just people that have donated. Like Danford's is was a big part of one of our fundraisers. So there, you know, I was letting, I actually met with Christina the other day about something, and I was telling her she was so excited that, it, that it's going to say, you know, Rocket Ship Park would like, to, the Treasury or Park Committee would like to thank the following. And so, yeah, it's going to be really, uh, really it's great. It's going to be great. It's good. Como Brothers uh, did the opening. They were fantastic. Yeah, they were. They did our first major kickoff, and they'll they'll be here Thursday. Oh, They're playing awesome. at five o'clock. You have again donating their time. They're a wonderful local band that you you know Talented. so. So they, you know, I'm sure they were great. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and the election, June 20th, just as a reminder, even though um, if they were running unopposed, mm-hmm. please Still make gotta sure get you out got and out and vote. And vote. And gotta get out and vote. <clears throat> I will be we'll d- be doing phone calls where you, we took out an ad in the in TBR again, full page, you know, reminding people to vote. We'll be sending out get out the vote cards because we still want people to exercise their given right to vote. Yes. So. Yes. It's important. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Just in case of write-ins, right? You do that to ensure? Yes. We're, okay. you know, not that we're worried, but <clears throat> you yeah. never know. There yeah. could, you exercise know. your right to vote yes. is the best way to say it. Yeah. Excellent, All right. Lisa. All right. Fantastic. All right, Good great. seeing you again. Thank enjoy, you so much. Enjoy this weather. Thank you. We are in a 90-degree hot spell right now. Yeah. Which yeah. Is and it's about 90 in here, so it's perfect. 90 in here. Yes. I'll get the AC on in between. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs>